is EastEnders fans and welcome to this special bonus episode of Albert Square After Dark. Now, do you remember us saying this? Oh, it's getting to the stage where I'm gonna need I'm gonna start needing like a massive chart to to follow all this to follow all these kind of different clues and relationships that are happening. It's getting very, very exciting. Maybe um, we should. Yeah, maybe we should. I think so. Well, turns out I don't need to. Maisie Spackman is a soap journalist for the Metro, and she has her own chart detailing who she thinks it is, who she thinks does it, and all other sorts of theories leading up to the events of Christmas Day 2023 in Albert Square. So I figured that she would be the perfect person to speak to. Here is my interview with Maisie Spackman, soap journalist for the Metro. Enjoy. So, Maisie Speckman, welcome to Albert Square After Dark. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. So, you are a soap journalist for the Metro. What yeah. exactly does that entail? So, essentially, I get to professionally fangirl about the soaps and have everybody read it. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. I'm, I'm so yeah. jealous. That's like the best job. <laughs> uh, how did you get into that? It was actually, it was really random and I wasn't expecting it at all. I'd, um, I was just coming up to graduate in a college where I'd done a musical theatre degree and I knew that wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. So I decided I needed to do something else. And it kind of just, ha it just fell at the right time. I am um, Duncan, my boss, put out a tweet for Pride Month saying, does anyone have any soap related stories that, that they want to tell? And I thought, yep. Yeah, I do because Coronation Street helped me come out. So I was like, I can tell that story. That'd be great. Amazing. So um, Amazing. we were chatting back and forth. Uh, he said, do you want me to ask you questions or do you want me to, do you want to write something about it? And then um, I'd written quite a few bits and bobs for college. We had to do like our own plays, our own musicals, things like that. And I, I like writing. So I thought, yeah, I'll do that for college. And then when he said this, I was like, yeah, I'm going to write it. So I sent it over and it just so happened that he really liked it. And he needed someone on his team. And he said, would you like to do it? And I said, yes, absolutely. Amazing. And, yeah, so are you like a, a big fan of the soap opera kind of genre in general? Or have you got yeah. like, so, yeah. So have you, have yeah. you been watching them all your life? Do you watch all of them? Yeah, I kind of, um, up until now, used to flip between. So I started off with EastEnders when I was about eight. And then I went on to Emmerdale. Then I went back to EastEnders. Then I went on to Corrie. And then I'm back on all of them at the moment. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> for your job to be just to sit and watch, so, well, not just to sit and watch soaps, but to to kind of just watch the soaps, absorb them, and then write about them. I'm so jealous. Yeah. That's like the that's like the best <laughs> job in the world. Um, and so specifically EastEnders, because this is Albert Square after dark. Of so course. what yeah. what is your relationship with EastEnders? So you say you started watching it when you were eight. Have you like always watched it? Is it your favorite, or is it? Um. I started watching when I was eight, so that was the Who Killed Archie storyline. Oh just God, before that, maybe for off. so old. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So yeah, I started watching. Obviously, was obsessed from the get go with Ronnie Mitchell. Mm. She was my favorite character oh, ever. Oh, no, rest yeah. in peace. We miss her greatly. We miss we her do. greatly. Big mistake. <laughs> we do. Big mistake. Um. So I, I watched all that storyline, and I I was a like hardcore until the baby swap storyline when I thought. I don't know if I can carry on going on with it. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so, and also at that point, I think I, I was going up to high school or something and, and I was a, a dancer, obviously. I did my musical theatre degree. I was a dancer all my life. So every night after school, I was in the studio until late. So it was then became hard to fit in watching the soaps. So then in, I so I didn't watch it for ages. And then in 2016, really bad timing, because obviously it was then announced that they were going to kill him off. I nah. picked up EastEnders again. Um, and then again, after that, had life got in the way. So I stopped watching the soaps and then picked it up just recently again when mm. I started my job. And I have loved it. I mean, since. it's. Yeah, I mean, right at the moment, it seems to be in like a really classic era, doesn't it? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Like, so if you're, so you get to speak to soap people, like people in the soap, so you get to interview people. Like, so uh, who, who, uh, who have you interviewed uh, uh, since you started doing this? Um, I was really lucky actually. I got to go to the soap awards, um, because I was living in Manchester at the time, and it was in Manchester, and there were train strikes, so it just worked out that I was I was the person there, and I got to go and do it, and that was absolutely amazing. So I got to speak 
there was loads of people. I think it was like 35 people in the end that I managed to get wow. around. Uh, from EastEnders, I spoke to James Farah, uh, Max Bowden, Tony Clay, uh, Scott Maslin, Ellie Dad. I'm trying to think now. There were so many. Jamie Borthwick. Um, who else? Loads of them. And they were all lovely. And then since then, I've done a few Zoom calls. I did uh, Lucy Benjamin and Danny Walters. We spoke to about uh, Lisa's return recently, which has been really good. Mm -hmm. And I also got to speak to Brian Conley and the one and only Gillian Taylor. <laughs> <of course. laughs> Uh, because you are quite the fan of Gillian Taylorforth, aren't you? I love Gillian Taylorforth. <laughs> I mean, quite right too. She's an absolute soap icon and yeah. a legend. So what was she like? What was she, What was it like to actually interview someone that you're such a huge fan of? Oh, amazing. I was trying to play it cool and I think I did, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't been fired, so it's gone well. That's good then. That's no restraining um, orders or anything like that. Yeah, though. exactly. <laughs> but yeah, she's just, she is just a legend like you can't really explain it she's so you can tell she's still so passionate about like what her work and what she's doing and and she was great she was funny like she told quite a few funny stories and things like that and it was really good <laughs> amazing did you reveal like where the location of the fountain of youth is or anything no like <laughs> no but Damn. i need to know <laughs> i know she keeps that secret she keeps that yeah. secret um so at the moment obviously one of the biggest storylines in eastenders is the big old christmas mystery now yeah. i'm going to, now you being a soap journalist do you get to know obviously you, you might get to know spoilers and everything right? so how far ahead are you in terms of what you know about what's going on in the show at the moment so i know a couple of weeks in advance mm -hmm. so i know what's going to happen in about two weeks time but that that's as far as it goes oh I, I, i'm jealous of that though like you know, you know <laughs> so have we can you i mean obviously don't spoil it too much but like is there have we, what have, like what kind of like have we got clues to come or is there or or anything regarding the mystery yes oh there a definite there is a definite clue coming next week <gasps> or during the wedding uh, yes, Ooh. which some people may have spotted because EastEnders put out a trailer of what to expect, and it can be seen in that trailer. Something to do with the wedding dress, maybe, is it? Ooh, yes. ooh. <laughs> um, I mean, one of the main reasons that I wanted to talk to you is because it is uh, <laughs> known amongst some EastEnders fans who follow you on social media that you have created a, a chart detailing everything that you've worked out about the mystery who you think it is, what's going on. So I was hoping to interrogate you about what you think is going on. Now, bear in mind, maybe that you know some stuff ahead of what yeah. is actually airing at the moment. So we'll kind of try and veer around that sort of thing. But give us give us some theories. What do you know? What do you think? Show us, like, what, what we got. Would you like to see the I chart? would like to see the famous chart. So yes, I would. I need to just clarify that this was on a wall, but I have just... <laughs> you are my sort so of fan. it's not, not on the wall anymore. Um, and it was also in three parts, but I've only got one part with me because that's okay. what the information is. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. This is the, the main chart. Oh, wow. So it's this is... It's color-coded. Oh, here you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so looking at this, this is a just a massive spider chart of everything that you're sort of... Uh, just emptied your brain about the whole thing. So okay. talk, talk to me about the theories. Like, who do you currently think... If it was Christmas Day tomorrow and you had to tell me who you think is think is on the floor or you think is going to be the killer what do you think well on the floor we've obviously just seen jack mm. be given the cufflinks yep which yep. is pretty damning evidence because if you're not aware the body the only clue as to who the body is is that they were wearing a pretty unique set of cufflinks yes but I do have a feeling that it is eastenders and within that episode the cufflinks were passed between three people so there's quite a way to go. We're only halfway through the year. There's six months mm. left until Christmas. So they are more than likely going to be passed around some more. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a game of hot potato with those couplings, yeah. I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So at the moment, so that's the main theory is as it stands, we're looking at Jack because he has the cufflinks. On the other hand, you've got someone like Theo, who has been revealed is Stacey's client. A bit of a weirdo. Um, yeah, not, not the nicest guy, but a little not really. Um, but people have obviously been taking notice of the colour of the dresses that the people are wearing when yep, they're stood yep. around the body. They are all in different colours, which we all think there must be a reason for it. And if you watch Stacey 
in previous scenes and scenes going forward, she is more often than not wearing red when she is interacting with Theo, especially when they're doing the, the oh, video. Oh, okay. So, uh, that's so good. that suggests that maybe he could have something to do. But then you've also got Keanu and Sharon are on the rocks, so that could be a thing. You've got Nish, obviously, is. I mean, he's my he's my key su- like key suspect at the moment because just the type of character he is, he almost sort of reminds me of Archie and like somebody yes. that somebody that would be killed off in a in a murder in a big Christmas Day episode. He just sort of screams that sort of character, and surely a character like Nish has only got a certain amount of shelf life, right? Yeah. You'd think, wouldn't you? And um, in my interview with Jilly T, uh, <laughs> Jilly T, Jilly, Jilly T, Jilly T. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, no, in my interview with her, she did say that um, Nish will get his comeuppance for what we saw on Thursday at the at the stag do with the uh, the pokey game. With the uh, with the honeymoon, oh, that's it then. So Kathy kills Nish, does him does his head in, embeds yeah. embeds his forehead with her high heel from her wedding for nicking her honeymoon. I think that's perfectly fair. I, although I do feel like she'd probably be more likely to do that to Rocky. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Rocky, I, yeah. I see. I think Rocky's a fair contender for Christmas Day, to be honest, yeah. isn't he? Because if you think about it, he has consistently lied to consistently her. Consistently lied. Yeah, it's all he ever does. Exactly. And you asked who I think might be the killer. I do. My if I had to put money down, I would say Kathy. I do believe. Really, I see. Yes. I, I don't know whether that's because I want that to happen. Or you just want I'm more Kathy. I um, mean, no. uh, that's interesting because I would have. I kind of figured like out of the six of them, obviously Stacy has killed before. Stacy's killed kind of, before. Yeah, and it's kind of telling that it's also happened in the Vic where Stacy has yeah. killed before. So, and the interesting thing, what you said about the dresses, the colours, are they relevant? You know, that's some, maybe mm-hmm. something to keep an eye on. Um, but at the minute, if I was to say that I think it's Nish on the floor on Christmas Day and it is one of the six women that kills him, the biggest guess would be Suki because Suki does seem capable of murder, more so than Absolutely. any of the others, I would say. But then would that not suggest to you that she wouldn't do it because to mm. me the most obvious people would not be in the frame because obviously Stacey's got blood on her hands so I don't yes. think it would be her. Denise is holding what we can only assume is the murder weapon so it's probably not going to be her. Mm. Linda is what looks like walking into the room yes. so hasn't been in there when the person has died which just mm. leaves Sharon and Kathy mm. and for Sharon to be so calm checking in the body checking the body is to be yeah. fair, though, Sharon's been on the square long enough to the dead body on Christmas yeah. Day. Pff, that's something we turn. Perfectly I'm common sight. <laughs> Perfectly common sight. Um, it's it's yeah, it's it's really really interesting, isn't it? It's probably one of the, like the best murder mystery that I've seen in soap for quite a while. There's just so many different threads, so many different kind of intriguing aspects to it. Um, but right now, your actual money is on Kathy being the killer, and yes. who do you think is on the floor? I don't know. I Who do would you not. Kill? Think, it, could be, it could be anyone because I do think Kathy is that sort of mother figure on the square. She's obviously yeah. she was best friends with Ange, so she's got that that kind of godmother sort of position for Sharon. Mm-hmm. She's we've seen her look after Linda after she's opened up to her about Dean and the rape because obviously they've both been through that together. Mm. You see, I give a little look to Suki. Um, yes, I think that's significant. Yeah. yeah. And I just think she she is the sort of person that would want to protect those w- particular women around her and would kill to do that. Interesting. I think anyway. Yeah, I mean, it, why not? I didn't have Kathy down as the killer, I have to say. I have, I kind of thought that Kathy is the sort of person that tends to just wander into these situations yeah. and find herself, oh, for God's <laughs> sake, what have I got to deal with now? Honestly, I have to sort yeah. everything out around this square. Um, what about what about Linda? I mean, obviously it's in the Vic, so that's it's a it's a kind of fairly obvious reason why she would be there. But we have a, a lot of stuff that's kind of been happening around Linda, sort of Cindy returning, George Knight. I think George Knight is a very kind of perfectly valid suspect for the floor as well. Yeah. We don't we don't know what kind of trouble Cindy is going to bring with her when she yeah. returns. And can I just say what an absolute um, like amazing addition to the cast the night side. Right. Amazing. And they they have slotted in and just from the get go. I I love that family so much. And mm. I know there was a lot of discussion about oh, do we want a new family in the Vic? 
I think that I've said this from the get-go I think that was exactly what the show needed and it has just they've just proven that it's it's worked and it's mm. going really well I mean what what castings as well like Colin Salmon yes. EastEnders head of the Vic yes, please amazing <laughs> and he is fantastic like I remember that scene that he did where he it was a four minute long scene with him just on his own in the Vic just sort of just kind of trying to take in yes. what Phil had told him, ringing Rose, turning the music on him, which, and he didn't say a word. It was just all in Colin Salmon's performance. Yeah. You kind of think no other soap does scenes like that, does it? No, not at the moment. And it's just EastEnders at the absolute top of its game. Yeah. Um, so, Linda, kind of not maybe not high on your list of being the suspect, what do you think? Unless it is Dean on the floor. If, yes. But then, this is something I tweeted the other day, Kathy made a comment in the flash forward ep about how Linda would ha- has an army of people mm. or something or would build a wall around her if Dean came back. So if it was Dean, I believe it would be any any of those women could have done it. Yeah, um, absolutely. But then you've also got the fact that Linda has a split lip, so obviously mm. she's involved. She's been involved somehow. Whether that's in <clears throat> actually killing the person, we don't know. It could be anyone, and it could be a seventh person. Yes, it could indeed be. Now, I mean, my I have to say what my theory is at the moment, if I had to kind of put money on a theory at the moment, is that it is Nish on the floor. Vinny has done it. Okay. Because what we seem to be building up to with Vinny a, a lot at the moment, A, is how rubbish he is at crime. Like, he's the worst criminal. <laughs> yeah. The, the, it's hilarious how bad Vinny is at crime. Uh, but there's a lot of kind of focus on his and Nishi's relationship and a lot of Suki turning around and saying, you don't need to go down your father's path and a lot of sort of focusing yeah. on that. Obviously, we know Nish is killed. Um, and Suki has, tends to lose quite a lot of children to the prison system. So yes. I can sort of see Vinny being the killer of Nish, hence the look uh, from Kathy to Suki and Suki kind of sitting down in shock as, though, as, as if I've got to deal with this again. And so Suki then having to cover for his son or maybe Ravi will take the will take the hits for it to make up for the fact that she that he made Suki think that she killed Randir something mm. like that that's my kind of theory on the matter See, that, I had a similar theory a few weeks or months like it's all getting together but a while ago I had a similar theory in that the women particularly Suki would want to get their own back on Nish would tell him to come to the pub and then launch onto him and then not realise that actually he's sent Vinny in his place and they've killed Vinny, which is why Suki is then sitting down and Kathy's like, oh my God. But I don't know how I feel about that theory anymore. Mm, I don't know if we, I don't know if we, could, we could lose another Panasar kid. It's pretty, no. It would be pretty rough for Suki to lose two children, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. What about Denise? Like She doesn't seem to have a huge amount, apart from Ravi, to kind of put her in the mm-hmm. frame at the moment. Yes. Obviously, she's holding that the bottle, the yeah. champagne yeah. bottle. Um, so that that if that is the murder weapon, then that obviously makes it look like she is the one that has done it. Mm. But then, as you say, it's Jack's got the cufflinks now, but will he have them by Christmas Day? And then you've got Ravi involved. So would she? I do believe she could be capable. I believe any of them would be capable. But mm. yeah, yeah, I. Yeah, and then obviously Sharon has got a lot of drama going around with uh, with her wedding. Uh, originally saying that her wedding was supposed to be on October the 14th. Now, I suspect we might be wandering into stuff that we don't know yet and you do. So I'll be ca- I'll, I'll tread carefully around this. What thing. I will say about October 14th is that it is a Saturday. Oh, it's well, it's definitely not birthday. that. I love that you know <laughs> that. It's 10 days before my birthday. So, I, I, <laughs> I, I yeah, I should know that really. Um <laughs> But I kind of don't, I feel like it's not Sharon. I mean, there's stuff going on with her okay. wedding, but some we know that Kat and Phil are supposed to be getting married on Christmas Day. So yes. uh, would Sharon want to, uh, I mean, I can imagine the relationship that Kat and Sharon have going at the moment to sort of have rival weddings on Christmas Day, I can sort of see that happening. I can see that happening too. Um, But yeah, in terms of the wedding and how she comes to own the dress because obviously that is the dress that Kathy has at the moment mm. how she gets that what when they have the wedding if they're going to have a wedding is totally unknown no idea at the moment I I can't see it happening I have to say I can't see Sharon yes. I don't think Sharon Taylor is going to become a thing but then again I don't particularly yes. I, I don't think that Karen uh, that um Kat Mitchell is going to be a thing either I no. Um, can't see I don't think yeah I think I can see Kat and Phil 
getting married, but I, I imagine she would keep her name. Mm, as yeah. some people in soap do I can't see her becoming a Mitchell but speaking of the Mitchells if you notice and going back to who it could be yep. if you notice the women in the six you've got a Watts potentially becoming a Taylor Yes. you've got a Carter you've got a Fox Brannon in Denise you've got a Slater in Stacey and you've, mm-hmm. you've got a uh, Beale slash on in uh, Kathy if they go through with the wedding we don't know yet yep, yep. Um, and we've got a Panasar in Suki but we yep. do not have a Mitchell Oh, and so Sam Mitchell is set to oh, come back I would and love that potentially one of my favourite theories that I have invented go on if you, if you watch the flash forward episode the whole episode not just the scene mm-hmm you will see that there is a fruit machine in the background. You see that because Denise gets up from her seat. She walks to the bar, not the the bar next to her, which is empty and perfectly capable of being served from. She walks round the corner so that the fruit machine is in shot, which you can then see is out of order. And when did an out of order fruit machine play into a whodunit? Oh when yes. Dirty yes, when Dirty so, Den was killed in day yeah. after after and no wonder it was out of order because Den smashed Chrissy's head into it. <laughs> exactly. And who else was there in that murder? Sam was Sam. there. Oh, that's good. Which I also kind of feeds into another theory I have, which doesn't necessarily say that Kathy has done it, but suggests that Kathy might go down for it. Oh. <gasps> Is a theory that I was really proud when I came up with this this name that I like to call Chekhov's engagement ring. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I love so that. If you because obviously I am a bit of a theatre nerd. So if you, yeah. you're not aware of the of Chekhov's gun. I, I do, but exp- exp- yeah. explain it. Feel free. So Chekhov's gun is essentially if you see a gun in act one, by act two or three, it has to have gone off. Mm-hmm. Else, what's the point in it being there? Mm-hmm. Now, a few weeks ago, you will remember that Rocky reproposed to Kathy. Yes. Again, just to give her a ring. And as they popped the ring on the finger, we had a zoom in on the ring. Right. So, I'll take you back to Dirty Den's murder, mm-hmm. where Zoe Slater, who was also involved, freaked out because her bracelet had fallen off at the scene of the crime. Yes. So what if we have seen Kathy's engagement ring because it's going to fall off in the scene of the crime um, and be found as evidence? Wow. I'm just saying. I mean, that's in depth, but <laughs> I I mean, I would massively appreciate it if the show went that in depth yeah. into its past just to recreate that. That would, be, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, and I do feel like under Chris Clenshaw, that is the sort of thing that they would do because he he seems to be a, have a real passion for those classic EastEnders storylines. Like we've had loads of obviously returns, but not Duncan even just Foster. that mentions. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's that. Uh, yeah, he has got, uh, I mean, he knows the show, he knows the show yes. inside out, and that is coming across on screen a lot these days. You know, we, we have got we are in an era that is completely and utterly aware of its own history, is quite happy to sort of refer back to itself, which yes. is the sort of soap that not only new viewers can enjoy, but long term viewers are sort of rewarded for. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, it's so so good, and the thing is, EastEnders is known for the whodunit. Like out of all, I mean, all the soaps do whodunits, but EastEnders does them the best, don't they? Because it's just the they they treat it like a real sort of long term storyline where it's so in depth and so intricate. They they just yeah. they were so well known for it. It's brilliant. Exactly, yeah, and they go they don't rush through them. They go on for a really long time, and that's mm. kind of what you need to. You have to be able to forget things that have happened. To them, when you're reminded of them, be like, "Oh my god, yeah, I didn't even think of that." Yeah, and that, yeah, that works in that kind of long term format. So, any other ma- any other theories that, that you've got that you're not seeing a huge amount of online? Uh, what am I not seeing a huge amount of? Someone I was looking through Twitter the other day, and someone has said that Jasper the parrot might blurt out some information at some so- point. Yeah, you have to sort of wonder why have they brought in a talking parrot? I mean, the fact that Rocky has 
a talking parrot. It sort of suits his character, but I don't know how keen I am on a talking parrot revealing a massive twist that sort of keeps the plot moving. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I feel like the fact that that it caused the drama it did with with Joe coming back and saying something about his boy and things that I think mm-hmm. that was enough for the parrot and also it would have had to have been a parrot because of the lifespan of the pet because obviously Rocky lo- left Joe 25 years ago so you can't have a dog or a cat or anything yeah, like lo- that how long do parrots yeah. live I I googled this about <laughs> of course you did because <laughs> I was like how, how about 40 years really but wow yeah, stuck with this parrot for at least another 20 years yeah that's mad imagine <laughs> That that parrot is the third oldest kind of resident of that house. Can't house. Remember. Yeah, that's mad. <laughs> that's mad, isn't it? Uh, any other theories that you might that you'd uh, like to share? Um, I, there's a couple. Okay. So we obviously have looked at this in a lot of depth, um, of course, of course. and we have been saying on Twitter that if you look at the six in the flash forward, they all have their nails painted a shade of red. Oh. So if we're going on the theory that there may be a seventh member, we're looking out for red nails. And I did write a little joke tweet the other day that Elaine's nails were painted red. But I, d- I don't think she's going to be involved. But you never know. You never know. Oh, so if, if when Sam, if and when, well, obviously we know Sam is returning at some point. So yes, keep an eye, but we don't keep know an eye, Keep an eye on her fingernails. Her nails, say. exactly. Okay. Um, Interesting. And then Interesting. the final theory we have mm-hmm. is that in the background of that scene, we see the fire roaring. There's a yes, lot of candles yes. around. And we hear the crackling of the flames. Now, there hasn't been a fire in the Queen Vic for quite a while. So are they going to set the place on fire to hide the evidence? <laughs> that would be it. That would be it. Why not? Why just throw Why it not? Why, Why would not? you not set the body and the building on fire in the process? They never do that in, in murders, do they, in soaps? Mm-hmm. If, if they did that, no one would get caught. It's a pretty exactly. obvious... Exactly. Burn your house down. If you burn it down. Burn, burn it yeah. all down. Why not? So, Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Maisie, that was brilliant. That was really interesting. And you've cer- I think you. you've certainly set my synapses ablaze with a whole load of people. <laughs> I should Let's be looking at... think about it. Absolutely, I should be looking out for <laughs> uh, some red nail varnish. Um, if uh-huh. people want to, if people want to follow you on any sort of social media, where where should they look for you? So, if you just type Maisie Spackman into uh, Instagram and Twitter, I should be the first one that comes up. Um, on Instagram, it's Maisie Spackman dot X, and on Twitter, it's a bit more complicated. It's Vic Shell, but the I is an X. Yes, because I <laughs> your your Twitter handle used to be that, and every time I saw it, I thought you were Vicky Michelle. <laughs> yeah, and if I could remember birthdays like that, I know, right? Like, so many happy you, memories. Yeah, literally. <laughs> she knows so everybody's it, birthday. She's a useful friend to have. Every morning, I'm like, whose birthday is it? And <laughs> Vicky's got me. <laughs> absolutely well um Maisie thank you so much for coming on and doing thank this. thank you for having this. me no problem thank you very much thank you so much thanks again to Maisie Spackman for a great interview what an absolute delight she was really really like funny really kind of so into EastEnders and I loved the amount of theories that she had and that chart really is a thing to behold it's just spectacular uh so what do you think of her theories uh and do you have any additional ones if you're watching on YouTube you can stick them in the comments section below or you can send them to us directly by doing any of the following you can find us on Facebook at Albert Square After Dark. On Twitter and Instagram, it's at E20 After Dark. And you can send us an email at E20 After Dark Podcast at gmail.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and to click all the buttons below to make sure that you are notified whenever we post a video. And that's all for now. My thanks once again to Maisie Spackman. And you can join me and Reed for the usual podcast episode at the weekend. Until then, see you soon. Bye bye.